Hello everybody, welcome back to the ASUS ROG YouTube channel. It's JJ once again, and I've got something pretty cool for you. Today's the official launch of a brand new CPU, and actually a, a pretty special CPU at that, along with the new chipset. So we're gonna be going over a couple of different things, not necessarily a deep dive. Uh, we'll be covering that in another video regarding the actual CPU chipset, some of the questions you might guys you guys uh, might have out there regarding that. So today's focus is gonna be a quick unboxing and overview on one of our boards for this. So first right up here, we've got the F1A75-V Pro. So what makes this different from some of the other AMD motherboards that we've recently covered? So let's go ahead and pull on out uh, a current AMD motherboard. So we recently covered um, our awesome 990FX Sabertooth motherboard, which was based off of the brand new chipset from AMD, the 900 series, 990FX. Now this CPU socket though was fundamentally still the same as the previous 800 series chipset and even before that in terms that uh, it was supporting AM3. The big difference was of course that this socket supported AM3 Plus. So AM3 Plus CPUs would be for the upcoming Bulldozer Zambezi platform. And uh, we could tell that from the actual black socket. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is that we're gonna go ahead and jump onto this board and allow you to actually see the difference between the two sockets because these are two entirely different chipsets. While, take for instance, maybe on in the Intel side of the fence where you have the ability to go ahead and have uh, P67, Z68, H61, H67, they are all the 1155 socket and the CPUs are interchangeable between those different sockets. This is not going to be the case here. So um, the 900 series, whether it's the 990FX, 990X, or 970 based chipset are gonna be your performance oriented chipsets, which are really focused at the higher end of the spectrum. So for hex core, six core, and eight core CPU support, and especially with a high focus at SLI, multiple GPUs, and, and kind of those more performance oriented features. So let's go ahead and jump on over to the actual, this board where we're gonna be talking about Lano. Lano is kind of the code name uh, for what AMD is now referring to as their brand new CPU, the APU. And the APU is essentially a CPU, but with a more advanced level of functionality offered into it. AMD is really talking about what's called compute performance in terms of bringing you a whole level of performance and functionality to a single package design. So that means it's not just about x86, kind of integer based processing, your normal kind of computation the CPU can do in the workload. But it's also talking about a multimedia experience. So where you're utilizing things like UVD3 and having a hardware level acceleration for Blu-ray, for flash, um, and giving you that level of functionality. And then also a graphics engine where it actually has an HD 6000 series graphics engine with 400 Radeon cores, up to 400 Radeon cores, where it's actually giving you some pretty good gaming performance on die the CPU package itself. So that's why uh, it's a little bit different name. It's not a CPU, but an APU. So this board here supports uh, the launching CPUs or APUs that will be out on the market, which will be an A6 series or an A8 series. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, jump into the board and take a look here. So like always, we've got our board wrapped up here in the anti-static. So go ahead and take this out, let you guys take a look at it. I'm not gonna necessarily go into it yet because uh, we'll go ahead and jump onto those components. But you can definitely see right off the bat where we have a key fundamental difference between uh, the two boards. As we can see, one is a black socket and one is a white socket. And we can also see that in the center of the socket, we actually have a perforation, we have a cutout. So it's very easy to see that there's a difference between the support for the APU uh, or Lano based CPUs, which have integrated graphics as opposed to your Thuban or your upcoming bulldozer a Zambezi based CPUs, which do not have integrated graphics and are also designed for uh, more cores, more threads. So we've got essentially six to eight core support and here we peak out at four core support, but with integrated graphics. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what else comes inside the box here. So this board is actually our pro board, which means that it's really focused on giving you a lot of value, a lot of functionality right out of the box. So we've got a basic set of uh, items here on the board, pretty straightforward. We've got our Q connector, comes inside here. So this is of course our really easy connection to go ahead and allow you to connect the leads from the inside of your chassis, for like power reset, but not to here, and then go ahead and connect to here. And then a USB Q connector to go ahead and allow you to have quick access to the USB port. So making that pretty straightforward. We've got two SATA 6G cables, which come included in the box. And then we've also got an IO shield. 
and uh, this is actually our nicer IO shield. This is a padded IO shield, which serves two functions. Two functions, uh, one is to go ahead and reduce EMI interference, helping us to maintain better stability, safety for the board, as well as also makes the actual installation into the chassis easier because it's a softer, easier padding to go ahead and push. It's supposed to bare metal where sometimes you can cut yourself. Also a little bit different is we've gone ahead and now done some color coding to the back of these uh, ports here, hopefully making it a little bit easier for users to reference where, what goes where. Okay, and what else do we have in here? We've got, of course, uh, the support installation disc. So this includes your drivers, as well as our customized software, such as AI Suite 2, which is our low-level system utility. It gives you access to overclocking, monitoring, uh, EPU, TPU functionality, a whole bunch of really cool things. So that's on the disc, as well as all your key drivers. And uh, as always, make sure that when you're getting your board set up, check out support.asus.com for the latest UEFI build or BIOS build. And uh, then we, of course, have our user guide and manual. Uh, one thing I kind of want to point out to you here, sometimes people are wondering about what actually comes inside the box and they want to make sure that everything is correct. We actually always look inside our manual. We always have what's called a package contents guide, which actually will specifically tell you which accessories are supposed to be included with your motherboard in the event that you're wondering, did something not come in there or you just kind of want to check on, check on that. So there's always good reason to make sure you keep your manual. It's always got a whole bunch of really good information in here regarding how to correctly set up your system, which DEMs to use, uh, you know, what type of items you might see when you're connecting certain things. So definitely keep that in mind. All right, that covers all our accessories here. So let's go ahead and get these guys back into the box and take a look at what you guys are, I'm sure, pretty excited about, which is a pretty cool motherboard. So let's go ahead and set this aside here. So let's take a look here at this F1A75-V Pro. Now, uh, the chipset itself will come in two different flavors, but today we're gonna just be focusing on the A75 variant, which is the performance area variant, which is focused at the A6 and A8 based uh, series CPUs, or APUs as uh, AMD is calling them. So first and foremost, when we visually take a look at the board, we can see one really cool aspect, which is uh, the actual heat pipe assembly or heat sink assembly for the actual motherboard. We can see that the actual heat sink goes directly over our VRM. So of course our MOSFET and drivers are underneath here and we see our sintered heat pipe, which also goes down to what's referred to as the FCH, um, which the FCH handles all our kind of like super IOS or serial ATA or USB and things along those lines. So we've got a whole bunch of uh, copper here. We can see here to helping to conduct heat so that we can go ahead and keep better efficiency. Now, driving this whole thing, we actually have what's called our DigiPlus VRM. So we've been talking about this a lot. You've seen it on a lot of other boards, such as like the Sabertooth board or any of the other boards. Uh, Asus has really been committed to kind of moving the industry forward and utilizing the best quality VRM design to give us the better, best efficiency, the best control, functionality, and overall performance uh, for CPU power delivery and for technologies such as turbo technologies, which are now much more prevalent on the latest generation of CPUs. And this board, while even being a kind of budget or entry level board, is still featuring an actual Digi Plus VRM. So we're really happy about now having this on pretty much across the board, uh, on the high-end Intel side, mid-range Intel side, high-end AMD and mid-range and AMD side, everything is utilizing our new Digi Plus VRM. So that's giving us a benefit here. Now let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the back I.O. first before we jump onto the rest of the actual board and kind of lay up. So when we take a look at here, got our board, and see that we have two USB 3 ports, and we've got a PS2 combo port. Now what's special about the, these USB 3 ports here, as you can also see two more right here, these are actually native to the chipset itself. So these are actually provided natively by AMD. One thing that you do want to keep in mind, guys, when you're actually installing your operating systems, because these are actually native and they're actually not installed uh, by default from the operating system, that when you first set up your OS, you want to make sure and take advantage of the two USB 2 ports that we've left on the back of the motherboard. The reason being is that when you're going through your Windows installation process, the keyboard and the mouse won't be correctly detected uh, if you connect them to the USB 3 midway through the installation process. So make sure to go ahead and go through here. Once you get the drivers installed, everything will be working. No problems, no worries. So just keep that in mind. Now here we can see we've got a whole bunch of, whole bunch of digital connectivity available to you. Uh, that's because we of course have the APU, the graphics hardware built into the actual chip. So we've got here, we've got uh, 
<clears throat> HDMI, we have DisplayPort, VGA, and DVI, and then we have a Toslink optical out connection. So we pretty much have every single uh, display out that's currently available on the market. So you can go ahead and connect any which way you want. And even these higher end digital connections are even supporting 3D technology. So you've got a very robust, capable platform if you're interested. While this is a full ATX board, it would make a great foundation for a um, home theater PC, or if you're interested, keep your eye out soon where we'll be doing an unboxing and overview on a micro ATX board, which would definitely serve that segment even better. So we've also got an eSATA port that we can see on here. Uh, those two USB 3 ports that we noted, those two more USB 2 ports, and then gigabit ethernet, and then of course HD audio. So that covers out our back IO connectivity. Going back over to the motherboard, we've got pretty much things that are pretty straightforward and standard. We have standard DDR3 dual channel support as always. So always ASUS has made it very straightforward, so we've color coded the DIMMs for different banks in the event that you need to know which bank to successfully install into. We've got the 8-pin CPU power, 24-pin motherboard power. Well, let's go ahead and now check a look and see about one of my favorite things. So let's look at fan headers. So we've got one fan header, 4-pin. Got another fan header, 4-pin. Another fan header, 3-pin. And then we have another fan header, 4-pin. So that actually for a budget level board, which keep in mind this is gonna probably be about $130, $130 motherboard, it's actually quite robust. Most of these entry level boards maybe give you two fan headers. A lot of time they're usually dual, dual three pins. So we're giving you three PWM fan headers and we're giving you full manual fan control for both the CPU and the chassis fan header so that if you're running a push-pull fan configuration, you get a lot of flexibility and be able to control that and set it up acoustically however you'd like. In terms of your actual heat sink, uh, while the socket is the same, the mounting mechanism is the same as AM3, AM3 Plus base heat sinks. So if you have an existing heat sink that you uh, have for an AMD platform, you can go ahead and transition it on here and you won't have any problems in support of that. Moving over to, your, to the furthest edge of the board, we can see that we have two switches. Our first one here is EPU and then the other one is TPU. EPU is part of what's called our DigiPlus VRM, so it's a special hardware IC, which actually gives us some very advanced abilities at power management. So this is a hardware level function of it, so we can flip it into the on position, and what it will do is it will apply a specialized undervolt algorithm to the CPU, allowing it to consume less voltage. Um, it won't affect performance, but by reducing less voltage, we're helping extend the lifespan of the CPU, reduce operating temperature at both idle and at load and helping to overall extend the component life. So that's a great option for users looking to get a lot of efficiency and that are probably running stock operation. For you guys that want more performance than what natively ships out of your system, then we've got the TPU switch. It's also essentially one second, one click overclocking. So the user can go ahead and just flip that switch up and it will uh, go ahead and apply a special algorithm that works through our TPU chip on the motherboard and overclock your, your APU and go ahead and give you an increase in system performance as well. So really easy, ASUS, ASUS exclusive technology is pretty cool. So let's move over to some of the other uh, bottom level connection types that we have. We've got a front USB 3 header on here. This is actually powered by an AS Media controller. Cool thing about this is this is offers some very, very nice performance and actually even our internal testing, we felt better performance than actually the integrated USB 3 offered uh, by the AMD platform. Plus it has some benefits of having high reliability at higher APU bus speeds. So you overclockers will definitely benefit from that. Taking a look at the actual slot configuration, we've got an awesome by one here, keeping at the top. So giving you access to allowing you to add in a higher quality network controller or possibly a sound card. You've got your by 16 graphics PCIe slot. Now this is special because as part of this chipset launch, AMD is launching a new initiative that they call AMD Dual Graphics, allowing you to take a 6400, 6500, or 6600 to a 6670 based GPU. And essentially it will work in tandem with the APU graphics chip that's on the motherboard, helping you improve your actual FPS or your gameplay performance. So an example might be, they'd say maybe playing uh, Alien vs. Predator that we tried out and maybe only getting about uh, 20 frames and then all of a sudden we kick it in and match it in with the APU and now we're getting maybe about 30 frames. So you can see about a 10 frame performance increase. Of course it will vary from title to title, but the great thing about the APU is that it utilizes the same exact drivers as the dedicated graphics card. So it makes it quite easy to go ahead and continually get the best traffic driver support that AMD is putting out for their desktop GPUs. You benefit even though you're running on the APU. 
you've got another by one PCI, then you've got a, another physical uh, by 16 PCIe slot, uh, but this one's gonna be running by four PCIe, PCI and then another PCI slot. So you've pretty much got a lot of expansion even though this is considered an entry level board. In terms of your serial ATA, all right angle, so that's great in terms of that connection there. And those are all serial ATA uh, SATA 6G capable. So great for even if you're gonna be utilizing a high performance mechanical SATA 6G drive or those latest generation SATA 6G SSDs. Um, ASUS always trying to give you a little bit more, especially on our Pro Series, our Mainstream Series. We've included one more uh, Serial ATA 6 port from AS Media. So this gives you a nice other option, whether it's going to be maybe for an ODD or a secondary storage device. You have some more expansion available to you there. In terms of the rest of the IO connectivity, pretty straight, straightforward. We've got a COM port down here. We've got our front audio connection. More USB 2 ports all streamed down here at the bottom and of course our front connection ports. So pretty robust board overall. I mean, you pretty much have everything that you're gonna want here. The Digi Plus VRM, the TPU, the EPU functionality. It's got our auto overclocking, auto tuning technology, which is also pretty cool. If you guys are interested in checking out more on that, let me know and we'll definitely do a video on that. Um, so you pretty much have a great platform for building one of these new APU based systems where you're gonna have the graphics and you're gonna have the computational power all ready to go uh, as soon as you install the CPU and add in some memory. So pretty solid platform and good to go. So that gives us an overall quick overview regarding this F1A75-V Pro. As always, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, leave it on the YouTube page. Head over to asusrog.com forward slash fours. Leave us some comments or questions there. We're always looking to, to answer that and give you guys the information you're looking for. As always, thanks guys. Hey guys, uh, I just finished actually this overview up, but I forgot to note to you one other cool option, actually two other really cool things. One, as I wanted to reinforce and let you guys know that we do have UEFI on this motherboard, just like all our AMD motherboards. So of course that's our advanced BIOS interface where you have an easy mode and advanced mode, allows you to have the 2.2 plus terabyte hard drive support, as well as have a lot of low level control over the VRM. But another hardware feature that I missed, uh, it was a little bit hard to spot right here is actually the memo K button. So the memo K button is actually a little low level IC that in the event uh, that you upgrade memory later on or potentially have memory that fails over time, uh, or you have a number of different variables that can sometimes occur regarding memory compatibility or memory initialization, the little QLED DRAM light will go on, which is uh, right next to that, and let you know there's an issue. And all the user needs to do is go ahead and just press that button, and it'll go ahead and go through some special algorithms that will attempt to auto-set the settings for that memory to make it the most compatible so that your system can go ahead and successfully boot and successfully post as well. So that's a pretty cool exclusive ASUS technology as well. So that kind of covers all the points that we were looking to go ahead and go over on this board. And like I said, if you guys have any other questions, definitely leave them on the page. Thanks.